So welcome everybody. We're happy to start Be'ezus Hashem today. This uh, course in medical halacha. And before we start, I would like please to ask Rabbi Fuld, the founder and the sponsor of the Be'ez Medish Gubar for medical halacha to give divrei psicha and divrei bracha to you, all of you, please. Good evening, I guess, to all of you. Are you folks all in Israel? No, they're in America? Yes. So it's good afternoon. America. I've joined you just now. We arrived there on Shabbos in the land of silk and money. Um, and I'm going to tell you it's nice to be here, but a lot less nice than it has been to live in Yerushalayim. You folks, I understand from Rabbi Sprung, have chosen the very, very noble profession, the very God-graced profession of becoming physicians, healers. And I salute you all, take off my hat to you. Um, very little that one can commit themselves to that's more noble than Rafua and helping other people overcome some tough xeros at time. But I want to share with you a thought that I've said before to medical students. We learn chesed, kindness, benevolence from Avram Avinu. The term is chesed Avram. It's Bible story, if you will, to be corny, is with the Torah records Avram sitting Pesach HaOel Kechom Hayom, very hot day, no eating, ventilating, air conditioning. Hotzi Chama Minartika, he doesn't feel so well. It's his third day to Mila. As a, you all are medical students, I assume you know, why is the third day more difficult post Mila? Because he obviously was developing an infection, pre-list or a non-sterile wound. And three malachim come. And El Abaka Ratz Avram, Avram runs to his herd. Lushi Vasi Ugos, he gives direction to Sarah to get busy baking. And the whole family gets involved in Achnos And from that, we develop the concept Chesed Avram, Avram Avinu, the Moko of Chesed. But let's be honest, I want each of you to think honestly, not viscerally, honestly. From there, two surviving Malachim go down to Zdom. Zdom is a bad town. Torah records, Kodesh Baruch says, Erdon of Er HaKitzah Kosoi. I'm going to go see what this bad yelling is about. What was the yelling? It was that little child, Riva who had brought some tourists a sandwich, if you will, and they nailed her on her father's roof, coated her with honey. She died by Kitsas Dvarim Misa Mishuna. They tortured the kid to death with bee bites for being hospitable. So when Lot invites the two remaining Malachim to come to his own, who's really most in Nefesh Who's really the ultimately dedicated, willing to die for Achnas Azochim, for being a Baal Chesed, Avram Olot? So I have a lot of difficulty saying Lot, but you must come to that conclusion, and it's a wrong conclusion. If you follow the story a little further, by your sober bias, they surround Lot's home because they heard he has these two guests he brought in. Hotzio some venado some. Bring it out of you. We're going to rape them homosexually. Give out. And Lot's answer is, Hilo lishte bonos, asher lo yodu ezish, asulem katov beinechem. I have two virgin daughters. Take them. Do with them what you want. Don't touch my guests. The story now takes a turn where you know something's wacky. Something's a lie. Load's crazy. 
on analysis, you'll notice Avram Avinu, like all the others, was Mekayim Kolatova Kula. He had on his dining room table, if you will, a Shulchan Aruch that told him what to do and what not to do. What was Chesed and what might not be. Lot lived by his uncle Avram for 15 years, real impressed with the man. Attend. He's the one who puts together a posse to beat those four malachim and bring Lot out of his POW status. Avram Avinu, Sarimenu, they're the center of all civilization. And Lot attempts to imitate, to emulate his auntie and his uncle will be in the paradigm of chesed for his whole life. The truth is, what he did is completely unacceptable. We give up our lives, we're most inefficient, for only three of ours, the proper response might have been, here's 20 shekel, go to the next town, buy yourself a plate of hummus on me, here, they don't like to be used, it's kind of dangerous. Leave here as quickly as you can. But Lot didn't have that balance of what seems like chesed and what is halachically correct forms of chesed. It was missing in Shulchan Aruch. I'm gonna tell you a joke that I've told often and I hope you'll carry it with you you go through medical school. The story is told of Dr. Schmidt, who passes away, comes to the next world. There's a long line in front of those pearly gates with a big desk, the Malach Gavriel sitting there. And then Dr. Schmidt passes the entire line, comes to the Malach Gavriel and says, hold on, here, position, degrees, titles, don't really matter. But time is no longer of the essence. We're beyond time, we're beyond title. So get online and wait with everyone else. And Dr. Schmidt has never been so humiliated in his life. He's outraged. He gets online and all of a sudden at the end of this long line, he sees a little man in a white lab coat that's pretty wrinkled with a stethoscope hanging out of his pocket Pay is tucked behind his ears, running past the whole line. The Malach Gavriel gets up in attention and opens those gates. And her Schmidt is fuming. He comes racing up about to attack the Malach Gavriel, verbally, of course. And the Malach Gavriel says, no, no, relax. That's Kodesh Bohu. He likes playing doctor once in a while. Why am I telling you this? It's a funny joke. But you know, we and Kodesh Baruch Hu, we're tefillin. Our tefillin praise Kodesh Baruch Hu. Kodesh Baruch Hu's tefillin, Mikam Yisrael, praises us. Each of you should think that if Kodesh Baruch Hu ever decides that he wants to play doctor for a day, he should want your lab coat. He should want to wear the mantle that you have made proud, the halachic healer, the one who knows from chesed avram to chesed lot, who knows the correct way. And I can tell you a hundred million examples of mistakes that are made in the interest of goodwill. You know that old adage in American English, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. The halachic Jew does not have good intentions. The halachic Jew has attention to the directives to the Shulchan Aruch. I must tell you, um, I'm involved a little bit in a genetics lab in Jerusalem. The dilemmas we have are sometimes overwhelming. How do you deal halachically with someone who comes in and says, I just want a taller kid 
none of my other kids can play basketball. Do you intervene in that and help that family choose embryos? I think you understand most halachists would say, don't go that route. And what about a child whose mother suffered from BRCA1, a propensity not to be able to battle breast cancer? And she wants to come in and make sure that her children don't carry that gene. Do we intervene there? And these are questions that need to be recognized as halachic dilemmas. And I applaud each and every one of you that you'll be devoting the time and your mental efforts to getting on track to knowing what Allah demands and when there are areas that Allah mandates we ask Yishayla, we go to God of Israel. Rabbi Sprung, I tell you arrogantly and proudly, I think is an intimate chaver of mine. He and I have done some projects together with success, Seata Dishmaya. No one would dispute what I'm telling you. He's a young, very dynamic Talmud Chacham. He's an important man who knows Torah and was Mishamesh, one of the poskim and the gedolim of our generation, Ben Amanus. And that girl is proud that Rabbi Sprung is his Talmud. Rabbi Sprung today is considered a mumcha in medicine and in halacha. He's a gentle person, but as a person who knows in what route we should travel to approve, to, I'm sorry, to reach an approved position in halacha and medicine. I'm going to tell you also that Rabbi Sprung has established really the shame of Luciferus, an incredibly successful effort at the Technion Medical School for medical students to be able to continue studying Torah specifically Torah relevant to their future practices in medicine. So I wish each and every one of you success, super siyata dishmaya, as you embark on this very noble career of being healers. I will not stay with you for the day. Um, I'm sorry. My son-in-law and daughter are making achnosa say for Torah now. And you know, what is it? Blood is thicker than water, my daughter. And I'm delighted that I have that. So I have to leave you. I have this conflict in time. But I'm sure you're going to have a marvelous time with Rabbi Sprung. Make sure you all maintain a relationship with halachists that can guide you with new technology and new dilemmas and things we never thought would hit before. I wish you all Godspeed and success. Rabbi Sprung, thank you for the opportunity to address this important crowd. And forgive me, I'm going to leave you, okay? Thank, thank you, and mazel tov, mazel tov. Thank you very, very much. Be well, Baruch Thank you. So, Rabbi Isai, we're very, very happy to start this thing. This is something that uh, Daniel Miller gets a big shakaya for. He's the one that basically initiated it and approached me and Bo Hashem, I hope that today we are going to start and accomplish a big mission of Rebbe Lamdeni Kola Terakula Regalachas. The first reaction was Shammai's reaction that I wanted to do is to, to take a uh, Ama Sabinian, to take a ruler and to push him off and to tell him it's not Shaykh, but Yes, it's important, and Be'ez Hashem, we are going to do this together. So <clears throat> just a few technical things, or one technical thing. I would uh, prefer if someone wants to ask questions so towards the end, or if I feel in the middle that it's a time to ask, where somebody wants, uh, will raise his hand or something like that. So we are going to... Um, so well, I, if I feel that that's the right time, so I'll ask. But I don't read chats as we give this year, so it's not going to be helpful. Anyhow, so today, Ben Sashem, we want to talk about the topic of 
treat basically what's called Chaye Isha and Chaye Oilam. You have a person that is terminally ill and is destined, according to medicine, we don't have any treatment that we could give him to change his status. The question is now, there is some type of treatment that we wanna try. When I say the word treatment, I mean either by medicine, that's one, we wanna try some type of medicine that we think may work, but on the other side, this also could be a danger for him, or try a procedure, an operation, and the operation may be dangerous for him. And I'll give, an ex I'll give examples that come up all the time. I would say these examples at least once, twice a week, I get these type of questions. You have a older person, an elderly person that is very, 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 very weak. He hardly could eat and has a lot of uh, problems, okay? He has a lot, a lot of problems. And there isn't too much that the, uh, the doctors could do. And suddenly, for example, he gets some type of pneumonia or some type of um, bronchitis, something that he, basically you have to get, treat him with antibiotics, but you have to give him with an uh, right intravenous uh, antibiotics. Not, you know, some, it has to be something serious. In certain cases, the doctors say that if we give him this um, antibiotics, it may cause him a kidney failure. And in that case, the kidney failure will kill him. So the question is like this, if he, ha he has now, let's say pneumonia, if we don't treat him, he has two, three days, he's going to live, then not more than that, a few days, a week, two weeks, but we know he's not gonna live more than that. On the other side, if we try to treat him with this antibiotics, he may, uh, if it works, so he may, he bears a Hashem will able to be, to live more. If not, so you are killing him by giving him, by causing him a, a kidney failure. Okay, that's one question. Another question that I'm just giving you as a detail, as this Hashem, as the sheer, as the sheer will go on, we are going to learn this case because this is a case that I am already following for a year. And this is a very, very, very um, interesting case. You have a kid that has what's called the ring 13. Okay, it's called the, the, ring, the ring 13. Um, and the, basically the story is, okay, that he, this kid is uh, now 16 years old. When it started, the story started as already 15 years, it was 15 years ago. And um, the, the, when I'm saying, when the, the Shaila was approached, he was 15 years old. And what happens is that this, um, this, this disease that he has, it's right to some problem with the chromosomes and he has a kidney failure. Now this kidney failure, basically, the question was, um, the question originally came was that he asked me if I could give him a meeting with Mary Virabi with Basha wife, Shlita, and uh, he wants to come with his wife to talk to the Rav. I said, okay, so I made the meeting and I felt, you know, I don't sit on all the meetings, but I felt that this one, I have what to learn. I sat into this meeting and basically um, everyone that was in that meeting, uh, he, you know, had tears in his eyes. The question was that he needs a kidney transplant and the mother says that she wants to donate her kidney to the child. And she asked, the Rav, is that the right thing to do? Now, we're talking about a kid that looks, he's 15 years old, but looks like a two-year-old child and has a diaper and has strength of a 15-year-old 
but is very, very, very small. And that causes a lot of complication because for example, if you want to give him, um, if he feels uncomfortable, for example, if you feel uncomfortable, so he starts pulling from each side. So if you put him tubes or something like that or anything that you pull, he'll pull it out because he's uncomfortable. So, so first of all, there was a big argument amongst the doctor if Bichlal to give him this option of, of um, give him this option of, of doing a kidney transplant. That was the first uh, th question Bichlal that came up. The second question that came up is, um, what should we do? If we can't give him this, we have to give him dialysis. Now, dialysis, the doctors explained that to give him dialysis, that means that he has to sit for around three hours between two and three times a week. And how is it possible? They don't see it technically possible because he's going to pull it out all the time and you can't tie him or maybe the right thing is to tie him. That's what they are asking. Okay, so they were asking this, the, the, um, these are the questions. So I'm not gonna go into all the questions because there's a lot what to learn here, but um, I could just tell you, I don't wanna leave you, you know, um, in the, with this question up in the air, what Rebosha said regarding the mother giving the kidney, but he's, Aitza to the mother was not to donate to the kid. She said, he told her that your mother for more children and you have to be strong for the rest of your children. Okay, that was that. But he said, yes, you have to try to do dialysis. Now they told him, you have to understand, we have to give him a trach. And you know, he puts his hands into the diaper and a lot of uh, things that are dangerous. Buzzer said, try. Okay, I'm not going into the detail. What is Nogea to us today is that there was an argument between the doctors, Bechlalif, to do it, not to do it. Now, we are basically, um, the argument of the doctors was regarding the, the, the transplant, if to do the transplant, not to do the transplant. In the end, what they, um, they did, Reb Usher told them to try, as of today, okay, up to today, Bor Hashem, this kid is sitting twice a week. They were able to take it down in Chari Tzedek Hospital to twice a week. And they're able, most of the time, people, um, there is people, nice people, good people that are sitting with him for three hours each time. And it's working. What happened was that the doctors came up with a, idea. Part of the problem is if they put, right, the catheter the, um, of the, where the <clears throat> dialysis um, connects, so if they, usually they put it in the front of the body, so the kid could pull it out. So here, what the doctors came up, some doctor came up with uh, and he said he'll do it in the back. Okay, he'll put it in the back, and under the skin, he brought it to the front. That was the, and it worked. And uh, I heard that it was a big chiddush, I don't know, in America, but in other hospitals in Eretz Royal, they saw it as a big chiddush in terms of that. The question is, when there's an argument between the doctor, and this is a question of chaye shaw, chaye oilam, what do we do in terms of that? That is what I'm, I want to talk about on this question. In regarding this. So the questions that we are dealing with is three questions, basically. First of all, when we have a question of Chai Shaw, can I get Chai Oilam by medicine, trying a medicine, trying a operation in order to save someone for Chai Oilam, or when there is an argument between the doctors, what do we do then? So in order to understand this, Okay, in order to understand that, first of all, let's try to understand what is the question. We have here Chaye Shaw. What does Chaye Shaw mean? Chaye Shaw means a short span of light. That's what Chaye Shaw means. 
On the other side, we are trying to danger and this Chayesho, but the reason that we want to danger that is in order to bring this person to a chance of Chaye Oilam. That's what we want to do. That is the question that we're dealing with. Now, before we go into the details, what is the, the idea? The Gemara in Masechet Sanhedrin, Dafa and Ches, the Gemara says that even a goises be dei shomayim, that a goises be dei shomayim, a hargoi chayev misa. The Gemara says there the difference between someone that is a goises be dei odom, a goises be dei shomayim, goises be dei odom, someone that kills him is not chayev misa. The Gemara there talks about he ko asar dei odom, 10 people, um, strike a person, hit him. So the Gemara is talking about that. And then the Gemara also is talking about, uh, but the Gemara there says that if someone is goises midei shomayim, someone that kills him is chayim me. So now we are not talking about a goises. Chayei sho, we're going to see later on and during Shir, what is chayei, what is exactly chayei sho mean, okay? We're, we'll try to make a definition for that, but what I'm trying to say is that we see here that even a guy says that it's less than a Chaye Isha, somebody that kills a guy says that has one minute to, li- to live, he is considered, he's over an Easter of Lois Sirtzach. Now I'm not going into the punishment if he has, but the love of Lois Sirtzach is, is a Chomer enough. The Rambam in Hilchas Reitzeach, the Rambam says, in Hilchas Reitzeach, the Shmir Nefesh, the Rambam says, Anyone that kills a human being is over The Sefer Achinuch, when the Sefer Achinuch talks about the Easter of Loisirtzach, the Sefer Achinuch says that Klape Shmaya, right, regarding Akadish Borku, there's no difference between if someone kills a Trefa or he kills a or anyone that you kill, okay, it doesn't matter what's his medical condition, you are chayim. That's what the Sefer Achinuch explains. So therefore, we see that even though this person has chayim shah, we have to worry for his life. And chayim we're not allowed to take away his life. Okay, so that is the question. So basically the question that we have here is that we're dealing with Chaye Shaw on one side, and the reason we want to danger this Chaye Shaw is in order for a possibility of Chaye Oyo. What is Chaye Shaw? So I want to share with you, I'm going to share this screen now, from now till the end of this year. I'm going to share the screen with you. And you're going to see here the first source that I'm brought. And this is the Chochmah Shloime. The Chochmah Shloime here says, or Shloime Kluger, says the Chochmah Shloime. This is on Shulchan Aruch in Yoridea, Simen Kuflun Hey, Sif Aleph. So the Chochmah Shloime says the following. He says, He says, we don't know exactly what is the shear of Chayesho. Or, or two years, He wants to say what? Somebody that lives a year or two will be considered Chayesho. <laughs> Who knows? They, why not? A person doesn't know if he's going to live for the next 100 years or he's going to live for the next year or two years or 50 years. It doesn't matter. So therefore, how could you define a year or two as Maybe it has to do with the condition. He says, no, it's a doichak. So he wants to say, cave on the tray for a chayev. She wants to say, what is the closest thing that we know to Chayesha is a trefa. And trefa, the Gemara says, right, the beginning of Eilu, trefa, the Gemara says, the Mishnah says that the 
Trefa is considered to be what? Someone that lives less than 12 months. So he wants to bring a raya from there that 12 months, that is the months that the that less than 12 months is considered to be Okay. So he wants to say. That's what he wants to say. Now he says here more. The kol ha'omed lamut toch shana nechshav chayesha. Aval im omed lamut bicholit ze achar shana ze lo nechshav chayesha. The kevon shiyoch alichyo is with bed choydes. Then chiluk ben choyli ze or mechoyli acher. The nechshav b'knar chayoyim. So the nachon the fi anius daiti. So that is the opinion of the Rav Shlomo Meklug. It says Rav Shlomo Meklug. If you have a person that has cancer, and according to the doctors, they don't have any type of cure that they could cure this type of cancer. And the doctors say, listen, this person could survive for two years, for 18 months. According to Shlai McLuger, this person is not considered to be Chaye Shaw. He's considered to be Chaye Oila. We'll see what are the Nafkaminas with this. Comes the Minchas Osher. And I just brought you the Ikara adverb. There's a lot of other sources to that. And he basically questions on the, here he brings the Chokmah Shloima. Here he brings it. <coughs> and he says the following. And he says the following here. He's questioning a question that I'm sure most of you were bothered. What's the connection between a trefa and chaye It's true that they're similar, but there's no connection. So what is it? Says the Minchas Asher. If I see a person that is ill, that it has a sickness, and he's going down, okay, deteriorating, meaning if you have someone that has a condition that that condition basically is taking him down step after step, and in medicine we know that that will take him down this sickness will take him down till he dies. This is considered to be chayesho. <coughs> so here a Basher feels that you do have to say that it has to be not more than six months. And why? Because he says, Because he says, so he says that there's a, medis, a medical literature that when doctors give up to six months, usually that is very precise. More than that, it's not. So this is very interesting, the approach of the Minchas Asher that wants to define the concept of Chaye Shor. If it's six months and less, that is Chaye Shor. Again, not enough six months and less, meaning it usually it goes together, that we have here a, we see that this person is going down and he is um, becoming, he is deteriorating and, and uh, going, they're becoming sick. Uh, I'm, I'm becoming, I'm saying, ill more and more and more. And that is the case. And therefore, he wants to say just because of the medical literature that that is more or less right. But if it's more than that, not clearly that you could define that as chayesho. Um, Anyways, I recommend you to see. What is the mucker of the whole suga? So now I want to try to understand quickly to try to understand this sugya of chaye sho keneged chaye oilam. Remember, we are talking about that we want to risk a 
chaye isha of a person in order to maybe get him chaye oilo. So this is a source, and that's the source of um, Sefer Melochim, where the Gemara, where the Gemara is going to talk about. And here we're talking about a famous Arba Anashim Etzeroyim. The Gemara in Saita, the Gemara says that it was Gei and three of his children that were out of the Machane and Kalal Yisrael were surrounded by Machane Aram, and they didn't have what to eat. They didn't know what to do. So basically, they 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 uh, said, listen, anyways, we are going to die from starvation if we stay here. So let us go and give up our life and go to Machane Aram because maybe they won't kill us and they'll give us something to eat and they will, they'll save us even though they are risking their life. So what is the situation? The situation is that they, if they don't go anywhere, they'll die of starvation. They're risking themselves to go to Machane Aram, that Machane Aram is, is against Kalal Yisrael basically, and they will what? Maybe, maybe, maybe a very slight chance that they will save, the, save them. That happened to be in the end that what? That they, um, they were saved because Aram wasn't there anymore. They ran away and they saved all of Kalal Yisrael. So the Gemara says, in Avoy the Zoradav of Zion Amuz Beis, the Gemara says the following Omar Bechonon, Amon Omar Chizno, Omar Bechonon, Sofik Chai, Sofik Meis, Ain Misrafim Meim. The Gemara talks here about when you have an um, Akum. We know that one is not supposed to, where the Gemara says here, that one is not supposed to go to be Misrafim from a Nachri. Why? Because they're Shudim Aretzicha, Shikhos Domin, that they're going to kill you. So you're going to come to this physician and he's going to kill you. So if this person is in a situation, meaning the Jew is in a situation of Sophic high Sophic base, the Gemara says, don't go to the Nochri to be misrapid. Vadai meis, but if he is what's called a terminal ill patient, meaning that he is about to die, then the Gemara says misrapid man. Then you are allowed to go to take refua from the Nochri. Says the Gemara, Mace, what does that mean? Mace, it doesn't mean that he's dead now. It means that he's destined to die. Oiko chayesho. The Gemara says, but what does that mean? He is dangering, he's right, he's, isn't he dangering chayesho? Says the Gemara, the chayesho, loi chayshinon. We are not concerned about the Chaye Shah. And the Gemara says, and where do we know that? The Gemara quotes this Navi that I brought you before. Look at Rashi. It says Rashi here, Sophic, Chai Sophic, Meis, Chodi, Chim, Loy Rapen, Roy, Sophic, Yeche, Sophic, Yamus, Ain Misrapping by him, David, Kehovi, Vada, Kotile, Umutav, Shianiach, Ula, Yiche. So Rashi says here something very interesting. So Rashi says, this Nachri for sure is going to kill him. For sure it's going to kill him. So why are you going? If he's going to kill him, why are you going? What is this Gemara talking about? We're talking about someone that is what? In major dangers. He's destined to die. So we say, go to this Ovid Kachov. But this Ovid Kachov says, Rashi, vadai kotile, vadai kotile. So, uh, so leave him. Maybe he has two more hours. He has more, two more days. Why to go to him? Okay. <coughs> so what is the pshat? So we have to try to understand what's the pshat. Toysfis, Toysfis asks a, a different question. Toysfis asks, what is this gemara? We're not concerned. We don't, we don't care about this chaye show. As Toysfis, doesn't the gemara in Yuma, gemara said, mefakhin olav sagal b'shabes, lochus lechaye show, ame chaye shin on the eco, um, the deacon may mail the hoch of also my one second. Th that's the answer. But what's the question of this? Is this is asking, what do you say that Chaye Shaw you are willing to give up? Isn't it a locha that is paskin? Okay, and we know that in Gemara and Yuma that the Gemara says that if you have surf site, for example, on Shabbos, you come and you could open and you could take and you and be Michal Shabbos in order to see maybe, maybe you'll find there 
a Jew, <coughs> maybe Suffolk Jew, Suffolk not, maybe he's high, maybe not, and even if he's high, maybe he's going to live for a few hours and maybe not. So you see that word that we're Michal Chabbos for Chaye Shaw also. So I don't want to see the answer in Thesis. I'll show you the answer that is more clear, the same answer in the Ritva, on the same place on Avedizar Dachov Zayin. Says the Ritva, you know, what, what, and what do we say there in Yumash Vepakhin, Pikuach Nefesh B'Shabbos V'Chayshin O'Nechai Shaw, the Hosom Hu Lehach Yoysoi, Says don't compare the two sogies. There we're talking about where I could give him life. I could give him life if I go and I'm a fakir de gal and I start working and try to save someone and to do anything I can. So what am I doing? I am doing an action of lehach So even though the lehach is chayesha, this is allowed. But here in the Gemara, we're talking about taking away is chayesha. The question is if that is mutter or not. The Ramban here, and I recommend everything you have, you could learn it. The Ramban says that the question here in the Gemara is ki He doesn't call it the question is not how do you understand this Gemara? You're not allowed to be misrapid from a nochri. So, right, and this is a question. You're, you, you have a lot of nochrim that you know together with you, and I'm sure you're going to meet a lot of them that are, and you're going to consult them and you're going to talk to them. And so what's the pshat? So the Shulchan Aruch and Yoridea, Simon Kufun Hay, the Shulchan Aruch Paskins Lahalocha. Kol Mako Vechoidi Sheshbem Sakono. On a level that would, that if it would be Shabbos, we would be Michal Shabbos. Ein Misrapi Megoi. Which Goi? Oh, Sheinoi Mumchele Rabim. If the Goi is not Mumchele Rabim, this is talking about back in those days when every person felt that he's a doctor and if he knew a little bit of herbs and things like that, he was a doctor, then we say he's going to pretend as if he is doing something good for you and he's going to kill you. But if this person is a Mumchele Rabbim certified, right? What does Mumchele Rabbim mean? He's certified. So then uh, you could. Okay, nurses are Mumchim. Okay, why is it that it's someone that is in a mumcha the rabbi is also because chayshin and shvichus domi ve'afilu says the shulchan aruch who sofik chay sofik meis ain misrapi mimen avani muvaday meis misrapi mimen okay that we're talking about someone that is not a mumcha but if he's a mumcha you're allowed to so that solved our question I'm sure you were question uh, you had. What does that mean? How today can we, in the modern world today, can we deal with Nochrim? The answer is you could because we're dealing with people that are Mumche Le Rabim. Okay, so that is Mutter. Another thing the Ramo brings is Why? And that also helps us today. That what? That when is it also only if he does it for no cost? But if he has what to lose, so then it's also. Today, if someone could lose his license, it's also enough, even if he's doing, if he's giving you advice for free. This Shaila that we brought is brought in the in the in the Shavuos Yaakov, the Shavuos Yaakov asked, "Look at the Shai." The Shavuos Yaakov asked the following question: Akum, um, no, no, here, uh, I and hey. Rofe mumche echad shechalai et chol yosh ekarov lamut v'kol arufim amdim shevaday amut toch yom no yomayim. So you have a patient here that is about to die a day or to, uh, all the doctors agree a day or two. There's one type of healing that helps. Okay, so 
but there's also a major risk that what? That he's jeopardizing his life in an hour or two. So the question is, is it better leave him in this situation and whatever he lives or lives or try to what? To do something that you can. Tshuva. Says the Shlus Yaakov. Since we're talking about Dine Nefoshes, as I said in the beginning, we are risking here. Chayesha and Chayesha is also Yisar of Loisir Tzach. V'tzarich liyot matun meod b'shei l'azu mishas u'poiski m'shevach ha'kires u'bdikes ki kol ha'ma'abed nefesh achat b'Yisrael v'chulei Right, and you should know also anyone that is mekayim nefesh achas kiyu kiyem oil amole. The full ayani re'eh the sheve al taisa says in the what's called behashkova rishoyna says it was Yaakov. I would say better sit and do nothing, as you learn. All right, never do harm. So here, if I do something, I may do, right? I may harm some, someone. Don't do that. No. She brings, maybe, right? Like we said before. Okay, I'm, he brings here all these type of things. I'm skipping that, okay? Because we don't have too much time. So he says, Beram, im efshar shale de refua zu shenotelo itrape le gamre mi folio, vadai lo ichaishino ne chayesho. So he says that since if uh, with this refua he is going to heal le gamre mi folio, be medaic the words, meaning if it's going to work, so it's going to heal him and take him out from this. Right sickness in that case. Which Gemara that we just learned? Okay, so we don't have time to go through all of it. But he basically says, since we saw in the Gemara in Avayda Zara that Vaday Mace, you're allowed to go and take a refua from right from the Nochri. So you see that what. That lechay shaloi chayshin on the Gemara said he says in such a case here where the question was um, should we do sheval tais or not he says no you go and you heal and try to heal him now he doesn't say he says refua when he says the word refua does he mean refua as medicine or he means a operation so we'll see. Just I want to show you the Pischei Tshuva in Simon in Yoridea Simon Shen Lametes brings this. Okay, this uh, this Shvus Yaakov as Lehalocha. Okay, you see it here. I'm not going to read it inside, but you'll see it inside. And the Gilian Marasha on the page in Kufnun Hey also Paskins Lehalocha. That is short, so I could read it for you. And he says Chaysha Umikan. So he also passes that in the Shvus The now. Okay, so now that's clearly that you could understand the Shvus Yaakov regarding a medicine. The question is, the word refua could mean also an operation or not. So the Achiezer understood so. Right? Operation, it means. Okay, so here you see that he has that he also uses six months. The Juani Rame of the Zore that of Zain, the bad day makes me srap and Kaishon and Kaishinon, Echa de Esha, she srap a boyfriend, the whole coach in Siashu. And then he brings Shubray Tishaken, who Bishvusiako, who is Hachuva Yoridea, who begin in Arashbo, the Hedu Chuvas Binian Sio, Inubitifers Israel, the Svorab Shuto. 
Now, that's what I wanted to see. What's the svara? The inchiluk ben chayeshon is man muat, shel yom or yomayim or eze chodashim, the yuan be sefer mishnas chachomim. Bedigduk chachomim, be ilches akum. There is a mishnas chachomim that says, shel mistapek beroi pe Yisroel, ishori de olecha yishol or chayeshon anu, be israp and meroi pe nochni, u bechure yesh lo imam. Bemaka pnimit shu begeder treifo, vim lo yasu anituach bevaday yamut. Kibo yiskos arabo perik beis be ilches ritzeh halok et ches. בואי רגע סטרייפה דה פוטו, אם יודע בבד שזהו טרייפה, והם אמרו, הרויפים שמה כזו אין לה תועלת באדם, ובזה ימות אם לא ימיתנו דובו אחת. אם כן, אין בו זה דין רציחו בטרייפה, ולפי זה, listen to this, יש לו אמרת בישראל, כי לא... What does that mean? So here he says, just one more, two more lines. אולם בעיקר הדובו נראה, זה כן, ולכה יש עוד אחד שלא יחד שיש בזה ספק עצור לספר קויס, וספק ויכוח נפש דויכה. So he wants to say like this. He says like this. Remember Rashi, I asked you a question before. Rashi said that He for sure is going to kill him. So why are you going to him? We asked the question before, why are you going to the, this not room? If he's Vaday Kotil, he's Vaday going to kill you, so why are you going to him? The question, the answer is, this is a Lomdash Sugya. This is a Sugya that is talking about, the question is like this. Clearly, yes, one is not allowed to be, to, one that kills a Chayi Shoh is very very like Sirta. But if the whole reason that I'm doing this is because I want to be matzil nefesh, so I have a din of pikuach nefesh, I have a din of a matzil nefesh, pikuach nefesh, doiche kol atere kulo, pikuach nefesh says the achiezer is doiche chaye isho. So it's not an action of retzicho, this is an action of atzolus nefoshes, an action of atzolus nefoshes, that's why it's mutter. So Rashi says yes, he's vaday kotil, but if Vaday Kotil doesn't mean clearly that he's that all of them kill. The ones that kill, they are for sure killing. But I today, and that and that's why I'm not allowed to go by Suffolk. I'm not allowed to go. Suffolk high, Suffolk mace, I'm not allowed to go to him. But when you have a Vaday mace, you're allowed to. Now, this Svara is not so clear. Because if you're talking about Atzas Nefasha, so why is it when a person is has more of a chance to live, something high, something made, you're not allowed to go to the Akum, right? If we're talking about Atzalas Nefashis, so they, then you have a lot. So again, we don't have time to go through the whole sugya, but if you learn the Mara Makamis that I gave you, you'll have answers to that. But I, and the, he brought here another thing, the Mishnah Shachomim. The Mishnah Shachomim wants to say that it has to be a Safik Ashaku, Meaning, not that clearly everyone that does it kills. It has to be someone <coughs> that he has a chance to, that there is a chance that he's going to live here, that he's going to, to uh, survive. And therefore, since there is a chance here of survival, therefore, that's why this is mutter. I, before I'm going to get back to the questions we asked, there is a, uh, a tshuva that I brought you here of the Igre Smoisha. Daniel, I'm sure you send it to everybody. I asked you, right? So everybody has these tshuvas, and if not, I'll send it by email. But this tshuva in Igre Smoisha, or Dei Chalagim, and Simen Lamed Vav, is basically goes through this whole sugya. He also explains Rashi, Toysvis, and all the Rishonim here, okay? But then I brought here another tshuva of Reb Moshe, a shorter tshuva of Reb Moshe, that, this page, where Reb Moshe says the following, Okay? So this is the question that he brought, and he says that he presented this tshuva to Rav Henkin. And the end of the tshuva is, okay, that 
where Moshe says that this is mutter, and he goes through all the, the things that we said before, and he says that not only that, um, Rav Henkin was masking with Rav Moshe on this tshuva, so I recommend you to see it. Then uh, be, um, there's another tshuva here of Rav Moshe that goes through different um, questions of uh, <coughs> on, on Chaye Isha and Chaye Oilam. Part of them we are going to learn in the next year. The next, the, this year we're t- we, we discussed about the Chaye Isha and Chaye Oilam of the person himself. Okay, endangering the Chaye Isha of a person. The, qu- the next year, Ben Shem, we're going to talk about is in a hospital when you have a situation of Chaye Isha and Chaye Oilam by two different patients who has Gdima. To who and these type of questions that we are, if there is because such a thing of, of uh, Kedima. Okay, uh, here in base, where Moshe talks about what is considered to be Chaye Shah, and <clears throat> in Gimel, he talks about Ripui Choyle Michaye Shah Le Chaye Shah, Aruch Im Yesa Betrufa Sheesh Bachacha Sakona. So that's the first question. So I think if according to what we learned today in regarding a trufa, since doctors today have some understanding that there is a serious chance that antibiotics are going to help, but they know that there is a danger, but the antibiotics is a refua. Clearly, since it's a refua, the Shavus Yaakov was Paschal Aloha said that it's mutter. Um, regarding going into um, um, making operations. So here, Ramoshe goes into um, into uh, what is the percentage? Thirty percent less than that. Go and you could see uh, see that or not. Regarding a machloikis between the doctors or not. So that interesting. There is a sefer achaim. There is a Sefer Achayim of Reb Shleim Kluger that he asked a question. Reb Shleim Kluger is talking about that someone that his situation was that he had to a, a amputate a limb, and if you won't amputate his limb, so he's going to die. But they weren't clear that he'll, he will be able to handle, okay, the, the, the procedure itse- itself. And there he wants to say that there was an argument between the doctors. Remember, I told you the story, what happens. And here he brings the Gemara in Yuma Dafi Gimel. I don't know if you part of you participated in the shirm I gave on Yom Kippur, but in, in Hilchas Yom Kippur, there is a whole sugya that talks about the the arguments between the choyle and the doctors or between doctors themselves. And here he wants to say that even if there is a mute why? Because there is no between two, like in Hilchis Eidus, two and a hundred are the same. And if there's two doctors that say that he could handle it, so it's mutter. So therefore, the doctor's opinion, if meaning I, and I want with this, I'm going to end and I want to explain something. When we say that there is that two doctors say that this, that he could handle it, okay? Three doctors say that he can handle it, and a few doctors say that not. So the doc, if we have two doctors, and again, that they're mumchim, there's a lot of dharm into that. We're not going to go into that. So if they say that he can handle that, that means that. His situation is that he has a sad that he, he's like a suffix pikuach nefesh. That's what the the Shlomo Kluger is mechadesh. It's a suffix pikuach nefesh. What I do, could do with him, and therefore, since it's a suffix pikuach nefesh, that's why I could help him and I could give him this uh, procedure. It was a pleasure, and Ben Sashem, we are going to continue. If anybody has questions, please.